the Boreas region, engulfed by a great war in a foreign land. On the brink of defeat, the Borean king summoned a dark force to help turn the tides of battle. The invading army was sent back home through mystical portals created by this entity. Their king, now under a lust for power, sent the army through more portals. As the fighting continued, a dear friend to someone had been caught in the conflict. As revenge, he created the ultimate weapon to bring back his lost friend and wipe out the remaining army. However, enraged over the fruitless war fought, the people demanded compensation from the Borean King. With nothing, a coup started thanks to the Dark Force. In an effect to stop this, he gathered the legendary Pokemon, Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. Using their power, a prison was created for the Dark Force, sealing its power, becoming a shadow of its former self. Hello everyone, my name is English Rebel, and today I will be playing through a Pokemon fan game called Pokemon Unbound. A fully fledged Pokemon game following the story of Hoopa and trying to become the Pokemon champion. And with the game having different difficulty settings, custom moves, and up to Gen 8 Pokemon, I'm going to be hardcore Nuzlocking my way through the expert difficulty. So this is going to be hard. And if you don't know the rules of a hardcore Nuzlocke, you obviously are new to this type of content. So, the list of rules will be in the description for you to enjoy. Now, without any further ado, let's get started. We are immediately woken up and teleported away into a lab-like facility, and forcibly captured and knocked out by a scientist. And, while unconscious, Hooper appears to check up on us, as another person appears, claiming to be their trainer, and telling them to obey after telling them they're a nuisance which is honestly super mean to Hooper. And so, after trying to find an exit, meet someone else who is also trying to leave, bump into each other and explain how we got into our situations. And after introducing ourselves, I don't know what to name them, and instead just name them after me. So, after finding we have something in common, find some caged up Pokemon hidden away and excited to be free. And with three pseudos to choose from, I went with the most interesting, Beldum, thinking it only had takedown. But after the battle, found out there were some custom moves you'll see later. Attacking the guard, we are able to then escape. Meanwhile, we see a cutscene of some sort of shadowy creature that is immune to both fire and cold, but not entirely electricity called a Shadow Warrior. They then inform this leader that we have escaped, but decide to keep it hidden to not relocate and spend more resources. We then barely beat our rival after getting hurt by Roughskin, and the professor in the area congratulates us on our victory. Our rival leaves, as we then have to complete an errand for the professor to pick up a parcel in the next town over. So. We catch a Vanillite from Route 1, and find a shifty guy who turns out to have our package, after a mix-up from the professor being too vague about who collects the package. So, we track them down to a mountain, where they begin a ritual that brings down freaking Articuno this early on in the story! They then manage to capture it using the Shadow Warriors, and see us after making their way back down. And, after recognising us, tells a grunt to stall us, but it's pretty trivial, and we get the parcel back. Back at the professor's, he realises the master balls he ordered were stolen, but ignores it like it was nothing and tells us to continue our journey, and gives us a town map, which has some really neat features. But moving on, we catch a swine up in Icicle Cave, fight our rival in another trivial battle thanks to our new Pokemon, catch a Stuffle on Route 2, Evolve Beldum into Matang at level 20, which is also the level cap for the first gym, which seems to be a grass den. This is in double battle format, 
So we start with Vinylite and the Tang, and they start with Floet and Gru. And unfortunately, because of the fog, we miss our moves as the Tang falls asleep. This back and forth of taunts and missing moves goes on for longer than I would have liked. But we eventually take down the Floet with Metal Bash. So they send in Comfy to heal the gloom and dodge everything. They then switch to Weedle, who takes a chunk of damage and goes down next turn thanks to Taunt. However, Vanillite's low, so we switch to Stuffle to take out the Comfy with Strength, which just leaves Gloom, who puts us to sleep initially, but with their combined power, they eventually go down, winning us the badge. We then meet with a man named Arthur, who tells us about the history of Boreas and the location of where the ritual happened, until we are interrupted by Jax, who informs us that people are trying to capture Moltres. So Arthur sends Jax to bring the professor to make a plan. And after Jax leaves, Arthur argues that I should go with. And thanks to us getting the badge, the professor is convinced. On our way there, we get a Phantom in the Grim Woods, a Starly from Route 4, evolve them into Staravia, and finally catch a Magby in Cinder Volcano before showing a cutscene of the Shadow Warriors catching the next legendary bird, Moltres. Jax then gets ganged up on after trying to intercept them, and they manage to go deeper in the volcano. So, we decide to team up to take them on. We see Jax attempting to thwart their plans to take Moltres, but is put on the back burner a bit after discussing how to deal with the Shadow Warriors. He asks for assistance as we join the fray, taking them on. We start the battle with Vanillite, who can taunt the Sableye and take a Nightshade. Then we switch to Stuffle, who is immune to their moves. So they switch to Shift Tree, as we also switch to Vanillite. We use Icy Wind to lower their speed and get them into the red. So we switch again into Stuffle, expecting the same as Saravia goes down. Jax then sends in Golut as we get sent into the red from Shift Tree and take them out, while Duskull goes after Gola. So we switch to Phantom, who avoids a hit and next turn Leech Seeds once, as well as Will-O-Wisps the Sableye, as Gola goes down. So as our ally brings in Magnemite, we Hex Sableye to take them out, leaving just one side left. But doubling up isn't enough, and we have to do a 1v1. After taking out the Duskull, and avoiding an air cutter, we take a hit and one shot, leaving just Cacnea. And after hitting a Will-O-Wisp, get put in the red. So we tactically sacrifice Vanillite, so we live on one HP, and take them out with strength, winning us the fight. After losing the fight, Team Shadow immediately leaves, and we report back to the Professor and explain what happened. After realizing they're going after Zapdos, they task us to get some more badges to help take them on. So, we catch a Nidoran female on Route 5, evolve them, catch a Makuhita in KBT Expressway, and again evolve them into Hariyama. All in preparation for the Dark Type Gym leader Vega. The fight starts with Nidorina setting up two Toxic Spikes as they miss a swagger. And, uh, stop, stop, what are you doing there? So it turns out I forgot Vanillite died, but I've already done like 20 hours of recording this run, so I'm not backing down now. Plus, all they do is die anyway, so sue me. And for your entertainment, make fun of me in the comments as I desperately look at which move is better for completely no reason. So we then bring in Hariyama, who fakes out and uses Force Palm with plus two after Swagger. And as they bring in Absol, who does a lot with Psycho Cut, we break past Confusion and take them out. Now, with Flypod threatening us with no toxic damage, we switch to Staravia, who can intimidate, take a hit, and bring in Weavile to poison. And after being left on 5 HP after the terrain torments us, we switch to Matang for Fake Out, switch to Hariyama for the Swagger, and hit back with our own Fake Out. Finally, switch to Stuffle as they go down to poison. Lastly, it's Lipard, who gets poisoned again as we go to Nidorina to take both Fake Out and Thief 
before getting too low. Good stuff all to resist the next thief, but they reveal they have pursuit, and Nidorina falls. So, we bait Stuffle and pivot to Matang, who can hit back after they try to salvage themselves by healing, until the poison takes them, winning us the badge. Then, after trying to progress, get jumped by some grunts and immediately get cornered, and are forced to fight for our lives against Iron. They start with Mistrevis, and we start with Haryama, who gets locked in by Mean Look. And, after not hitting ourselves in confusion, we take them out with knockoffs. Next is Volibee, so we switch to Staravia, who can take the pluck and Rock Tomb that definitely would have killed if not for Intimidate. So, we switch again to Swine Up as they go to Kadabra on the Icy Wind to reduce their speed. We then go to Phantom who can take the hit and will-o'-wisp the Volibee coming in. This leads us to switch in Beware on the Flatter and take down the Kadabra on the switch in, leaving just Volibee to be taken down by us using Strength and Burn damage from pivoting between Pokemon. This disappoints Zeph, who believes can take us out with just Houndoom alone, and after Ivory's doubts, we prove them right, as Hariyama can fake out, paralyze with Force Palm, and resist the Sucker Punch to take them out. Then, after hearing some news, decides to let us go, but not before an earthquake and talks of a huge monster that sends the grunts for more manpower, leaving us to overhear about Shadow Warriors being stored and the rage of this Fey person breathing down their necks. And as they leave, we get teleported by Hooper suddenly and end up in the expressway where we get the TM for Cut to help us get to Blizzard City. With that, we catch an Aaron in Valley Cave, a Deerling on Route 6, evolve Magby into Magmar, catch a Shinx on Route 7, and watch our rival trying to confront Ivory before getting absolutely bodied by Alakazam. Check up on him as he seems fine collecting Pokemon, as we tell him we need to get to Blizzard City and also wants to battle, but once again, we're too strong as he then departs. Letting us get Rog and Roller in Frost Mountain, a Minior on Route 8, a Snova in the Frozen Forest, defeat this burglar on a side quest until we hear a noise and see a crabominable snowman, who we are able to catch as a static encounter as we evolve Rog and Roller in preparation for the flying gym. She starts with Minior and we start with Matang, who gets a critical hit Metacore as they set up Stealth Rocks. So, we use Bullet Punch, but they switch to Crobat as we get another crit. So, they use Bite as we Metacore twice, and they crit once. And, after trying to Bullet Punch again, they go to Pinsir. So, we switch to Baldor, who takes the X Scissor after Mega Evolving, and forces them to send in Gliscor on the Rock Blast, hitting five times. Next, we go to Snova, who resists the knockoff and Ice Shot before going down to a gem boosted acrobatics. So, we go to Crabominable, who lives on 4 HP and can kill with Ice Punch. This sends in Dodrio, so we go to Luxray, who resists both Aerial Ace and Knockoff to take them out with a Spark. Leaving Laron to be immune to Venoshock from Crobat, one shot the Mega Pinsir and finish off the remaining Minior and Crobat with two Iron Heads. Afterwards, we get Rock Smash and see Jax fighting Ivory until Alakazam does the same trick against our rival and sends him into the water as she heads to Route 8. So we go down to see Jax asking for a favour to lend him a hand before going to the mountain, and we agree to try and find a way around a magical barrier, but before that, we grab an egg from this old lady, which hatches into a Togepi, evolve Phantom into a Trevenant using a Link Stone, which is able to evolve Pokemon without a trade, evolve our new Togepi into a Togetic, catch an Execute on Route 11, a Maril on Route 10, a Magikarp in Fallshore City, who evolves straight after catching them, a Time Pole on Auburn Waterway, Shroomish on Route 9, and finally Ordino in Alt Woods. Defeat this trainer and team up with Jax until we find a house with Team Shadow inside, causing troubles for some old people. As we then start questioning them on why they want to destroy their own region, 
they in fact wish to use the power for a good instead. And after seeing us, prepare a fight as well as a backup plan just in case we beat them. But unfortunately, Gyarados and Luxray both fall in this fight, leaving our last two Pokemon to eventually take out the Oranguru with Hornleech and Skittersmacker. With that, Jax gets a bit overconfident as we witness the old couple turn into Shadow Warriors thanks to the scientists, allowing them to retreat with the stone prison while we have to save the couple. But they are easy to manage thanks to Star Raptors Intimidate and them doing most of the heavy lifting, leaving the couple okay and finding out where they will head after trying to obtain Zapdos, knowing we will need the gym badge to learn strength and scale the mountain. So. After finding the gym leader enjoying nature, they head back to their gym. Evolve Staravia into a Staraptor, Swinub into Piloswine, and then again into Mamoswine, after teaching them ancient power. Evolve Execute into Executor, Dealing into Sourcebuck, and lastly Timepole into First Palpitoad, and again into Seismitoad. All in preparation to fight Mel, who uses an inverse field making super effective moves not very effective, and types that would make you immune super effective, and so on. They start with Beware and we start with an Intimidate with Soraptor. Go to our own Beware as they also switch to Miltank. And after trading bulk ups and power up punches, we are able to live in the red and take them down with strength. Next, they bring in Porygon Z. So we unfortunately sacrifice Beware and go to Executor who can Giga Drain twice past Confusion, living on 6 to put them in the red before going down. So we sent in Mamoswine to clean up. Next is Heliosk. So we go to Staraptor who gets paralyzed, and after they switch, we go to Sourcebuck to sacrifice them. But we manage to Leech Seed in return. So we bring in Magmar to use Flame Blast, but we just miss out as flame body procs and we go down to ice punch. So we sent in the cleanup squad again to take them out until Hilius comes in. So we switch again to Star Raptor who lives a swift and one shots with Aerial Ace, leaving just low punny who mega evolves and uses for Charlie to take us out, leaving just Mamoswine who after resisted power up punches takes them down at 60 HP with two rock tombs barely winning the badge. We then make it over to the mountain with Mel, who curb stomps a grunt for us to let us into the cave, where we are able to grab Magnemite, solve some strength puzzles, evolve Magnemite into a Magneton, and again into Magnezone after leveling up inside the mountain. Also evolve Meryl into a Zoomeril, grab a key to free the timber who rebuild the stairs, which allows us to confront Marlon who summons Zapdos atop the mountain. However, the Shadow Warrior's lightning resistance doesn't work, so Marlon takes things into their own hands with Crocodile, who can attack and capture the Zapdos. But as they are about to leave, we confront them, getting in their way as we start the fight. Where they start with Zapdos. Luckily, we have Mamoswine, so after setting up a light screen, they get hit with Rock Tomb, Ice Fang and we break cast Confusion to take them out with an Ice Shard. Next is Sharpedo, so we switch to Breloom on the Aqua Jets as they manage to evolve and leave us with 2 HP as we strike back with Drain Punch. Then they send in Swoobat, so we go to Magnezone to resist the Air Slash and knowing they'll switch we use Tri Attack. And with Crocodile out we switch to Azumarill to take the hit and use Play Rough against Dusclops. So, we go to Hariyama who benefits from the burn with Guts as we knock off twice. With Crocodile out again, we go to Breloom who takes the power up punch and hits Swoobat. So, we switch again to Magnezone and we repeat the prediction going into Breloom. And switch until they stay in. So, we sack Breloom to bring out Mamoswine who avoids Esper Wing and takes them out with an Ice Shard. Then it's Dusclops, so we go to Hariyama and knock off Crocodile, and send in Trevenant, who is immune, and can go to Azumarill, who goes down, to send in the cleanup team once again. 
leaving just our squabs to be taken out by Trevenant's Phantom Force. This proves ourselves worthy to Marlon, who concedes and decides to let Zapdos free. Continuing our journey, we catch an Alolan Geodude in Cliff Cave, a Psyduck, Shelder, Wishy Washy, and Bard Brooch from Fishing, and take on Successor Maxima, who will give us a Mega Stone where the fight is long, losing Seismitoad and Wishy Washy before living on 9 HP and taking them down, giving us an option between a ring, bracelet, cuff or charm, but we choose the cuffs. We then replace our fallen comrades with Barbroach evolving into Whiskash, receive a Skaroopy from this man and two Unova starters from this lady after defeating the first four gyms. First Snivy and then Tepic, went back to grab a Volpix egg for completing that mission with the Crabominable, evolved Tepic into Pignite and again into Enball, Geodude into Graveler, Psyduck into Golduck, Skaroopy into Drapion, as well as Snivy into Servine and again into Superior, Laron into Agron, Volpix into Ninetales with an Ice Stone, and Togetic into Togekiss with a Shiny Stone. Get a surprise rival fight which we can take care of easily as the professor finds us and gives us Surf. But we can't use it until we get the fifth badge. And on our way there, we see a cutscene of Hooper and the person before claiming them as their trainer, wanting Hooper to bring Zapdos through a portal, even though it would leave them with no energy in order to take them to the ruins of Void. Reporting in they have it, and then forcing Hooper with a promise that fatigue won't be an issue after the ritual is complete. We then grab a Solosis on Route 12, find another person giving Sinnoh starters and take a Chimchar, evolve them first into Monferno and then into Infernape, catch Gola in Rift Cave, Sandigast as a static encounter in Daria City, and finally evolve both Lombre into Ludicolo and Shelda into Cloyster thanks to the department store selling stones. We then find Jax in the game corner practically advertising the games in the arcade, which is pretty cool, I recommend you check it out. But we leave so it's quieter and discuss how to approach taking them down, still thinking they don't have Zapdos, and is a great way to take back Articuno and Moltres. But in order to get there, we need the badge so we can surf. Suddenly, Hooper just appears out of nowhere and sends us through a portal with Jax following suit. On the other side, we arrive at the Ruins of Void, where Shadow Grunts are stationed at the top, but as Jax tries to send Staraptor up to fight them, they get hit with a blast that also destroys the staircase, but also opens up the lower levels of the ruin, meaning there's a chance we could climb it. But first, we are able to teleport back thanks to an Abra inside, grab Emolga, Halucha, and Eevee. We also catch a Yamask in the Ruin, evolving Matang into Metagross, and go up this ladder to stall a super bulky clay doll using Trevenant and Drapion's immunities. Getting past the first obstacle that then barges through the walls to take us to the next challenge, where we have to complete this puzzle with Hooper. And after clay doll absolutely bodies these grunts to Kingdom Come, find Jax's Staraptor who will make a full recovery. We then prepare for the next challenge by evolving Graveler into Golem thanks to a Link Stone, as well as leveling up Golurk into a Golurk. We then see our next challenge is taking out the three legendary dogs back to back. Raikou is easily dealt with by Golurk. As Entei comes in, we send in Whiskash to resist the Iron Head and put each other in the red. So we switch to Infernape who lives both attacks and takes them out with close combat. And lastly, with Suicune, we first switch to Metagross, but realize we need to sack Whiskash. So, Magnezone can come in, hit with Discharge twice, which was a bait to use Mirror Coat, and take ourselves out. We defeat the barely standing grunts and go deeper, only to be captured and watch the scene unfold. Everything is in place, and any loose ends like a Marlon have said to be dealt with as they place the entombed bottle down and release the three legendary birds. He completes the chant and is outraged that nothing happened as someone named Aklov appears 
who seems to be just another grunt. Zeph demands answers from them, as they reveal the last piece missing, purposefully hidden out of any files he could have access to. And, as they are about to fight, Hooper summons a portal and sends his Houndoom into a different region. They then explain that even though they have the power, it is us that Hooper prefers as its trainer, and wants to eliminate us. So, Hooper will accept them as their true trainer, and then they will have full control over their power. And, after Zeph steps aside, Akloth finishes the ritual and the dark entity is released, making Hooper unbound. Zeph tries to reason with Aklov, but their goals are completely different. Where Aklov wishes to use the power to activate the ultimate weapon once again, like back during the times of war, Zeph wishes to bring back that which he was lost, as they say he lacks ambition. But before showing the light of ruin, we are called to the front by the grunts. But as Zeph argues that they work for him because it's his organization, and even though the reins were handed over, they had a deal. But Aklov sees them as someone easily replaceable. Thankfully, Hooper does not wish to fight us directly, but instead they bring forth Ho-Oh, who we have to fight. But as the battle begins, they have a shield. A shield! So, after Gearglyph tries their hardest, I come up with a plan to utilize them having Brave Bird, and dealing itself a lot of damage, plus Sandstorm Chip, leading to us being able to take them out with three sacrifices, which is a fair price. Until they bring Lugia as well! So, I plan to sacrifice Emolga, who resists most of their moves, to get rid of all of their shields and then bring in Ninetales to Ice Beam three times, which means they go down. Afterwards, Aklov realizes we're too much of a problem, and decides to take matters into their own hands by trapping us inside a cube storage space that is modified to accept organic matter and keep its form. And even if it doesn't work, it means we're done for, and so, after being transported into this void-like space of pure data, we eventually come across both Marlon and a mysterious scientist, who, after conversing, realises he's our dad. Proud of us, we then narrowly avoid a flying bug plate, realising that our father has been doing this for possibly 16 years. Our father then asks about Hooper, but we fill him in. And, with Marlon trying to forgive himself for his sins, they say that the wounds inflicted don't outweigh the good that they thought that they might bring. Understanding and mentioning the name Faye sparks a memory that might help us leave. But, we begin to glitch to a new space, as most items do apparently. So, moving quickly, he manages to take our own cubes and reverse the effects of the item storage. But, after asking why he can't come with, they explain that they only have the second version. So, before we disappear, he activates it, and we arrive outside the volcano, where the remaining Shadow Warriors are being hidden. As we go down, we see Marlon confronting the Dark-type gym leader Vega, who has been working with them the whole time. And, after they ask where the Shadow Warriors have gone, they reply that they have been relocated somewhere else. Bickering to one another, while the grunts try to interject, until they have finally had enough and a shout about our arrival. So, we are forced to go into a fight against the gym leader's improved team. We start with the Protect as Crocodile grabs the knockout on Hunchcrow, as Leopard uses a move called Burning Jealousy. Next, they bring in Weavile. So, as they fake out us, Crocodile can pick up another one shot against them. Then it's Absol, who mega evolves, so we bring an Embor to resist the Iron Tail and take out Absol with Hammer Arm, but not before Crocodile also goes down. Next is Spiritomb, 
and after taking a Dark Pulse, we one-shot the Life Heart. Finally to come in is Bisharp, who also gets one shot after living on one HP, but the field effect of darkness kicks in, and so we go down, allowing us to send Togekiss back in and eventually finish off the Spiritomb, defeating them once again. So we lay to rest this lonely shadow warrior and chase down Vega, who comments on the pool of lava behind him, telling the legend of an ancient creature as he then summons Groudon with the red orb and puts it in its primal state. Then, after Marlon tries not to be intimidated, Groudon shakes the ground, giving them an escape. So, we are left to deal with them, but we are split, and with their Pokemon unable to fight and mine available to him, we let them take the reins. And, after two deaths, we are able to store them out with Minior, going back into its slumber. Marlon informs us that the next mission he needs to go on alone. But let's slip where he's going, so, just like anyone would, we make our way there. Putting on his old clothes, getting the Metagross Ite in the storage base, and chasing after the scientist, who turns out to be Marlon. In the room we see them discussing Aklov, taking all of their supporters as we enter wearing his uniform. But Zeph is so shocked that we are out that he doesn't believe who we are. Another trick by Aklov, and challenges us to a fight. They start with Mightyena and we start with Inferni, who can outspeed the Sucker Punch, but gets blocked by Gengar, so we switch to Mamoswine as they Mega Evolve, and trap us with Shadow Tag. They hit their Toxic, as we are able to one-shot with Bulldoze. This then sends Mightyena back in, so, we also switch to Metagross, who resists the Psychic Fangs, and can Mega Evolve themselves, to live a Sucker Punch and finish them off with Iron Head. Next is Decidueye, so we switch again to Togekiss, who gets trapped with Spirit Shackle. But, we can hit with Air Slash, and heal with Wish and Protect, combined with Leftovers, to eventually take them out with another Air Slash. Then it's x -Bloud. so we go to Infernic who just barely lives the Hyper Voice and one-shots with close combat. And thinking out we can take out the Umbreon the same way, I'm immediately humbled as Infernic goes down. Even though it would have been safe to go to Gollum in the back with full HP. After the battle, Zeph believes it's us from our battle style alone and begins to trust us. As Marlon then stops the inviting, as Zeph explains the plan to destroy the Light of Ruin and leave the main force reeling as we then steal the Prism Bottle back. Then, while Hooper is being analysed, we can go over and seal Hooper's power away once again. But when Marlon vouches for our help, Zeph is hesitant as we've only been a thorn in their side. But Marlon trusts us after being in the cube together and explains about what he saw about our father and what happened to him. But we aren't agreeing so quickly, so they decide to share their utmost secrets with us, so we can join their cause. After Zeph's son's passing, Marlon and Ivory go visit Zeph, coming all the way from the Hoenn region, to see how he was doing. They converse on what they had missed out on, as they talk about their own child's passing of an illness and how they thought about bringing them back scientifically. But were content about the lives they had by filling the void in their hearts with twins, Melanie and our rival. This opens a whole can of worms, but they don't want us to reveal it, even though we don't actually talk. But. The story continues as they describe themselves leaving their children behind in pursuit of this miracle way to bring someone back. Creating an independent organisation on top of Zeph's own corporation that created the cubes we know now. They handed over the company to this fate woman that we heard about before, with their own secret division inside that would be able to fund their research after he had gone. And over time, 
they had finally made the first Shadow Warrior, which partially failed but gave hope for the project. However, they realised that this would never actually bring anyone back from the dead. So, they tried a new approach to bring them back with the ultimate weapon, like how the Pokemon was brought back in the stories. And from there, we know the rest. Suddenly, a scientist enters, telling us that they found a Hooper's portal fragments in Vivil Town. So, while they head there, we are tasked with getting our gym badge so we can follow suit using Surf. And that is where I will leave part one. That's right, I'm making this a two-parter, because the next part will probably be longer and will take twice the time to make, if we even get that far. So, if you want to stay tuned for the next instalment, subscribe and turn on that notification bell to be notified when I upload. I'll try to come up with a series in the meantime, but there's no guarantees with my current schedule. And, with all that being said, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.